Good morning. Our church secretary, Amy, will be on vacation tomorrow, but she will be back in the office on Thursday. Our next board meeting is on Monday, October 14th at 6.30 p.m. The designer purse bingo will be held on October 13th. The doors and the kitchen will open at noon. Bingo will start at 1 p.m. Tickets are on sale in the narthex. Prices are $25 in advance and $30 at the door. On Saturday, October 12th at 2 p.m., Pastor Russ will have a special blessing of the animals out in the parking lot. The next Saturday evening service with communion will be held on November the 2nd, a light meal at 4 p.m., and the service will be at 5 p.m. Bible study this Thursday at 10 a.m. and 6.45. On December 22nd, after the worship, we will have a budget congregational meeting and the election of new officers. We are having a all-you-can-eat pork and sauerkraut dinner on Saturday, November 16th, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Adults 13 and over, will, the cost will be $13. Age 3 to 12 will be 7, and under 3 will be free. There will also be three big-ticket items for a raffle to benefit the P Peter Conforti family at the dinner. Uh, we all know who Peter is. He's, uh, he passed away suddenly. He was a state cop, from what I understand. Very nice guy. October is Down Syndrome Awareness Month. The Sunday School will be taking a special offering on October the 6th to raise money for the Eastern Pennsylvania Down Syndrome Center and to support Abigail Troxel. Uh, team, Abigail's Adventure. Next Sunday is World Communion Day. Communion will be held at the altar. And that's all I have for now. We have a couple other announcements. Thank you very much. Good morning. Hi. New voice, huh? <laughs> um, so there's a lot of announcements going on. We know that, but when I... Um, offer some additional information so we know what's going on inside of some of those announcements. Um, as we mentioned, there is a fall festival coming up and that is down at the park and that is October 19th. So anybody that can join, the festival is from 12 to five and we are joining the, so the fundraising committee, which is what I'm up here speaking for, is joining the outreach committee who will be doing the trunk or treat and that is from one to three. So come in and enjoy the festivities um, down there all day. We're gonna have food. Hot dogs, different kinds of soup, pumpkin roll, ice cream, all the toppings you can imagine, so all the good stuff. Um, we're also going to do some games. There will be photo opportunities, so they're setting up um, displays for photo opportunities. Um, in those games, we want to announce that there will be a build-your-own scarecrow, um, but you will need to bring clothes for that in addition to the ones that you'll be wearing. Um, so if you'd like to build your own scarecrow. So much more to come with that. So um, come, come out and, and you know, enjoy the fellowship of the day. Hopefully we have great weather. Again, we are down at the park for that. If we do get a lot of rain, we'll probably be up here at the church as we were last year. The second announcement is, you may or may not know, that Sunday, October 13th is Pastor Appreciation Day. <laughs> so the fundraising committee for Pastor Appreciation Day is looking for some support from everyone, um, if you can. But they are, the fundraising committee is going to run a food train. So we're all not going to get on a train and eat food. Um, what that is, is we're going to put um, a container out in the back, and the food train will run for as long as the food train is fueled. And we fuel the food train, and it's going to be run by Erin Ziegler. And what that is is she's going to get with Pastor, and on days of his choice, and restaurants or grocery stores or whatever it may be, food of his choice, um, will come and deliver food and things to him and his family, um, to participate in the food train. So we are going to do that for Pastor. This will be in the back um, and collected every week to feed that train. But any additional questions, see a member of the committee or see Aaron Ziegler, and we'll help run that train. So that's what I have. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. Tomorrow uh, at 6 p.m., outreach is meet, meeting down at the Sexton's house. This is really important because this is our busy season, and we were approached by the four other churches on November 23rd. We will be helping the three other churches with a Thanksgiving dinner for the entire West Penn community. It'll be a drive through but tomorrow that's one of the things we'll discuss. But I also just heard fundraising is gonna help us too, so any members of the church, I'll keep you posted on that after tomorrow night. And I met with Pastor Randy yesterday from Ben Salem. Trunk or treat, that's our part. We will have trick or treating from one to three, like Stacy said. If everybody can have their car decorated by 1230, if you don't want to decorate your car, just come and open your trunk, have treats for the kids. We'll have free pumpkin decorating, free cupcake decorating. It's a lot of fun for the kids. The first time we had it up here, we had 80 children. When we had it at the park, we had 189 kids. So hopefully we'll get it out to the whole, it's for not just for Zions, but for the whole community. So we will keep you updated next week on our announcements. But anybody that can come, please come to our meeting tomorrow night at the Sexton's house. Thank you. Good morning. This is a day that our God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome each one of you here today to worship Zion Stone. We're welcoming those who are joining us via Facebook this morning and via YouTube later on. It's just a joy. Um, this food train or something brand new, thats I didn't know anything about this. But that's okay. Pastors don't need to know everything, do they? No. I didn't even realize it was Pastor Appreciation Day. I didn't even know that. <laughs> Lost in the 50s, I guess. That's all I can say. But anyway, thank you for that. That's very kind. Very kind of you to do that. Um, I'm just thankful that we can all get together today. Even though there's, there's no sunshine, there's the sun, S-O-N, shine right here for us today. So let's enjoy our time together and let us delve into worshiping our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and Almighty God as well. Let's all rise for invocation. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives our, all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statues of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. By them is your servant warned, in keeping them, there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of many great transgressions. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you in your sight, O Lord, my rock and our redeemer. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. 
We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins. Draw near to us with grace in time of need and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Our opening hymn is, They'll Know We Are Christians. And you may be seated. Good morning. The first lesson is taken from the book of Esther, chapter 7, verses 1 through 6 and 9 through 10. So the king and Haman went to dine with Queen Esther. And as they were drinking wine on that second day, the king again asked, Queen Esther, what is your petition? It will be given you. What is your request? Even up to half the kingdom, it will be granted. Then Queen Esther answered, If I have found favor with you, O king, and if it pleases your majesty, grant me my life, this is my petition, and spare my people, this is my request. For I and my people have been sold for destruction and slaughter and annihilation, and if we had merely been sold as male and female slaves, I would have kept quiet, because no such distress would justify disturbing the king. 
King Xerxes asked Queen Esther, who is he? Where is the man who has dared to do such a thing? Esther said, the adversary and enemy is this vile Haman. Then Haman was terrified before the king and queen. Then Harbona, one of the eunuchs attending the king said, a gallows 75 feet high stands by Haman's house. He had it made for Mordecai who spoke up to help the king. The king said, hang him on it. So they hanged Haman on the gallows he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the king's fury subsided. Here ends the first lesson. The second reading is taken from the fifth chapter of James, verses 13 through 20. Is any of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. My brothers, if one of you should wander from the truth, and someone should bring him back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of his ways will save him from death and cover over a multitude of sins. Here ends the second reading. gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter, verses 38 through 50. Teacher, said John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we told him to stop, because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said, for no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. Whoever is not against us is for us. Truly I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose their reward. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them if a large millstone were hung around their neck and they were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed that with then with two hands and go to he into hell, where the fire never goes out. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where the worms that eat them do not die, and the fire is not quenched, everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt among yourselves and be at peace with each other. This is the gospel of our Lord. And you may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be given to you from Almighty God 
and our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I'll make an admission. I am not good at drawing. When I try to draw something other than a line, it doesn't resemble very much of what I had in mind. Now, my two sons are decent artists, but it seems that trait for artistic talent just passed me by. Now, for those like me who are artistically challenged, today's gospel reading is about drawing lines. Today's reading is about drawing boundary lines. In our gospel lesson from Mark, it was John who was drawing the boundary line. It appears that John came to tell Jesus what he and other disciples had done because he thought Jesus would be pleased. Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. Because that someone did not fit our understanding of who has authority to do things in Jesus' name. That's why we drew a line and we put him on them on the other side. So, you know, it's really a matter of control. You know, you just can't let anybody do anything, especially heal, in the name of Jesus. So John says, are you proud of us, Jesus? Aren't you pleased that we stopped him? We know you wouldn't want it just anybody using your name. We did good, didn't we? Well, then, just with a few words, Jesus erased the lines that John and the others drew. Jesus said, do not stop him, for the one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon after to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. Whoever is not against us is for us. And that reminded me of a story. It's a story of a 6th century abbot. His name was Dorotheos. So one day, as the story goes, his monks came to him and said, we have had it. We can't worship God in the company of our fellow monks. Now, the problem wasn't any kind of theological debate or any kind of faith crises where they all were united in their beliefs. They used this wonderful phrase to define their problem. It was each other's, quote, ordinary irritating presence that got in the way. Ordinary irritating presence. You know, I have an idea what they were talking about, and perhaps you do too. Dorotheus responded by saying, he says, imagine life as a great circle with God in the center, and all human beings are points on the circumference of that circle. And imagine then there are straight lines connecting all human lives to God from those points to the center of the circle. What do we observe? What do you observe? The first thing is that we cannot get close to God without getting closer and closer to our fellow human beings. The second thing is we cannot get closer to our fellow human beings without getting closer and closer to God. So what Dorotheus is saying is that to worship God, we need to get closer and closer to our fellow human beings and their, quote, ordinary, irritating presences. Easy to do? Is it easy to do? No, not at all. It's much easier to draw a boundary line to exclude than a circle to include, isn't it? But relationships between those who would follow Jesus indeed are indeed round-table relationships. See, the kingdom of God is more like a family dinner table than a cafeteria line. It also seems to me that our Christian faith is founded on three basic assumptions. One, that there is a God, and two, that God is good, and three, that God is engaged in our lives. There is a God, God is good, and God is engaged in our lives. Now, if any of those assumptions is in serious doubt, then faith falters. These are faith assumptions which we can't really scientifically prove. Yes, there are times in our lives when we seriously wonder if there's a God at all, where we wonder if we have been left alone in this meaningless universe. And there are times in which, though we may believe in God, we wonder if God is harsh or that God is cruel. 
We fear that when something bad happens that God is punishing us or just adding to our misery. And though we may believe that there is a God, and even that a God is good, we may feel that God is sort of aloof, just uninvolved to really make a difference. You see, doubt can be real. Doubt can be real, but the strange, strongest faith faces doubt, faces doubt and remains open. Faith is simply this, being open to the possibility that God is there, that God is good, and that God is engaged in our lives. And if we're open to this, and I encourage us to be open to this, don't rule it out until it's given a chance. And that is faith. That's the attitude of openness. Now, all three of these assumptions come together in the person, life, and teaching of Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ, who became the risen Christ, we remain open to this, to meeting this good, this engaged God. All the gospel proclamation is saying is, saying is try to be open in this way. Try trusting and see what it happens. Try drawing a circle instead of a boundary line. In the, wide, in the wider view, this circle would encompass different Christian denominations. Then even wider, this circle has the effect of dropping a stone in a still lake, as you know, the circle, the, it radiates out in the ripples. Wider and wider circles encompass other faith traditions and eventually include all humanity. That most certainly is the direction that we as followers of Jesus Christ are called to go. That way may, we may all be one. But to move toward this level, we have to solidify and perhaps even modify where we as God's people are now. Now, let me tell you, I'm a little prejudiced, okay? I'll say that right up front. But I know this congregation. I've been with you long enough to know you. As a congregation, as a body of Christ, you have demonstrated a tremendous potential for growth in the ministry that this church can do. So I ask you to trust in our choir to trust in our Christian educators, our committees, our fellowship events, our desires to be active parts of the church and the wider community that will not diminish, that the ministry they provide will grow. Trust that our capacity to attract new members will not diminish, that it will grow. And trust that our visions for ministry and mission will become clearer and will not fade, that our ministry will expand. Trust that a good God has led us this, thus far, and this good God will continue to lead us. But it's true, every act of faith is a leap. Every act of trust is a risk. But we cannot sit on the sidelines and say, well, God, you know, I trust you. It's your problem, you know, just keep me out of it. So as a congregation, we'll work as hard as we can. As a congregation, we prepare as best as we can. As a congregation, we pray together, we discuss together, we listen to one another. And then as a congregation, we trust and we act. But think of it this way. To live by faith is to be open, to, be, to open our hands to God to receive God's words and God's blessing. And as we open our hands to God, we are led to open our arms to others, first to those around us. We open our arms to receive others, to welcome others, to embrace others, to be open to what we may receive from them, and what we may be give, what we may give to them. See, when you have open arms, what do we have? Not a full circle, is it? It's a half circle. Two half circles, though, make a whole circle, right? And not one of us, unless we really get contortional like this, can make a circle by ourselves. And let me submit to you, that is the art of drawing. Thanks be to God. Amen. Ms. Gordon, please rise for our next hymn, Lord, Speak to Me.
Please say with me now a statement of our faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And you may be seated.
born anew with the hope of your redeeming grace, O God. We come before you bearing our gifts. Use them to spread abroad the good news that is in Christ resides, the promise of release from captivity. Hope that peace can prevail among all your people and assurance that you usher in the dawn of a new day. Amen. And you may be seated. Just uh, before we begin the prayers, to clarify, um, one addition to the prayer list today is Jane Miller, um, the mother of Rosalie Rarick, not Janie Miller. So uh, just to save some questions later on, let us pray. Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. Loving God, bless your people and shape our witness to the good news of Jesus that we joyfully share your transforming love with all. Bless the efforts of community leaders, aid workers, and all who work for justice and peace around the world. Hear us, O oh God. Amen. Holy Creator, we pray for the healing of the earth. Renew our waters, oceans, seas, marshes, and rivers. Uphold the work of public servants and concerned citizens and all who care for fragile ecosystems and habitats. Help all of us to appreciate the world you have created for us. Hear us, O oh God. Lord Jesus, draw near to anyone who is in need, to all who grieve, bring consolation, to all who are weary or lonely, bring solace. We pray for caregivers, doctors, nurses and counselors, be with all who care for loved ones. By your grace, make your presence known to all who call to you for healing, especially Beth Billman, Denise Campbell, Beth Frace, Kevin Fritz, Johnny Ham Sr., Ricky Kemmerer, Jane Miller, Annette Mogish, Barbara Renninger, Edwin Weirich, Weirich Jr., Julie Wood. Hear us, O God. We give thanks for the saints who now rest in your eternal presence. In thanksgiving for their lives of faithful service and witness, we commend them to your loving care. Send your spirit to guide us in lives focused on eternity with you. Hear us, O God. We entrust these prayers to you, holy God, and we ask them in the name of our precious Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our closing hymn is He Leadeth Me. And now may the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord's grace shine on us with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.